2011 for us was a has to be considered a bit of a, a vib vibrant and dynamic year uh, for U.S. Zimbabwe relations, and and I hope to keep our positive momentum going for the remainder of time that I have here in Harare. For a long time, people have perceived U.S. Zimbabwe relations as being about our disagreements, uh, challenging elections, political violence, sanctions, and, and human rights concerns. Over this past year, my team and I at the embassy have sought to focus intensively on shifting our emphasis and the public's emphasis from these issues that divide us and instead uh, attempting to highlight our common interests. I fully understand that over the past decade there's developed a fair bit of stigma about the United States and perceptions about our intentions here in Zimbabwe. And because of that stigma, because of that, that negative spin on the relationship, I really applaud the people here who've taken the risk of engaging the big bad U.S. ambassador and other American officials. I know that some people see talking to, to me and talking to other U.S. officials as being disloyal to Zimbabwe. And trust me, there are still some people in Washington who are very cynical about talking to Zimbabwean officials as well. And, and that's another area where we have sought to change perceptions and to introduce more balance, more nuance, and more reality into how people see the situation. At the end of the day, though, I'm here to do a job, and, and my personal uh, inclination is to get things done. Uh, I'm here to advance U.S. interests. And I strongly believe that U.S. interests and Zimbabwean interests largely overlap. Uh, we've spent so much time focusing on the areas where we disagree that we've ignored the large universe of areas where we do have common interests and we've allowed those to be neglected for far too long. To advance those common interests, though, we need to talk. We need to share ideas. We need to brainstorm. We need to explain what elements of our interests can work and which elements cannot. We've got to be willing to take the risk of being honest with ourselves and each other if we're going to do something together jointly to benefit both the American people and the Zimbabwean people. And at the end of the day, that should be our primary objective. We've not been without achievements over the past year. Uh, together, we're expanding ed educational opportunities for the children of Zimbabwe. We're bolstering food security in rural communities. We've made some significant efforts in the fight against HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria. Uh, we've worked to bolster agricultural production and market linkages, and we've work to expand trade ties and that list. That is not a comprehensive, complete list. In 2012, I'd like to keep that going and use it to build greater confidence between our two governments. I hope to leverage the coming year to make further advances in even more areas where we share common interests, countering human trafficking, uh, clearing the minefields along the Mozambican border, improving protection of intellectual property rights, supporting progress on the so-called SADC roadmap, countering transshipment of narcotics through Zimbabwe, and I could probably, given time, think of a half a dozen more areas where it's in our mutual interest to work together. 2012 will be a notable year for, for other reasons. I know that there's a fair bit of angst in Zimbabwe now that the U.S. has just assumed the chair of the Kimberley process. In that capacity, it's our intention to play a strong role of facilitation, and we have no desire or intention to impose our decisions on anyone. The KP has an effective arrangement in place regarding Morangue, and it's clear to us that there's a strong commitment from Zimbabwe, the monitoring team, the U.S., and other KP members to somehow allow that process to continue. 
working together with the vice chair of South Africa, we will be seeking the input of the membership to reform the KP as appropriate to ensure that it addresses the new and emerging dynamics in global diamond trade. This year we'll see elections in the United States and possibly a referendum here in Zimbabwe. All of these events will require the same fundamental dynamics, strong national institutions, transparency, dynamic and broad-based media coverage to keep the electorate informed, a nonpartisan police and security sector, and the commitment of each and every person involved in the process to respect the will of the people and to do their best to make both our countries better, stronger, more peaceful, and more prosperous.